Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today is going to be a very like choppy and edited video because in today's video, I'm going to show you guys how I print, cut, and punch my personal size inserts and put them in my personal ring planner. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in, keep watching. Guys, so I'm gonna show you guys like the first step I'm just making this as super basic as possible. And this is how I print and cut my inserts. Um, so what I did was I need some more personal check registers to put in my personal rings. So I just went in Etsy and I downloaded the file that I used from Simple and Trendy Co. I've got my printer right next to me. So I was just going to show you guys like kind of the basics. So I always go with um, the version that has two on one page. I just feel like it's like a complete and utter, if it'll open, <laughs> there it is. I just feel like it's a complete and utter waste of paper. Why is this not opening? Oh, there it is. Um, to print like one insert, you know, because you can fit two on there. So my tip is, I guess the first thing I'm gonna say is I'm on a MacBook Pro. So what I learned is you, the best way to print inserts is if you download the free version of Acrobat Reader. You can just go on the Acrobat Reader website and download the free version. To me, this this oper this um gives you an opportunity to print it in like it's supposed to be, as opposed to like if you're on a MacBook, there's the uh, Image Finder or whatever it's called that opens up for pictures and it just doesn't print as well. So I always recommend this program when you're printing inserts. Um, like I said, I am breaking this way down. So the next thing I do is I pull it up and I have two pages on here. So I want three copies of this um, because I like to print a bunch at one time. So that way I have it. So you'll just go up here to file and go to print. I typically, I don't have a duplex printer, so I print one page at a time. I print, like if I'm printing multiples, I'll print like three copies, like for example. And I'm printing with 32 pound paper, by the way. Um, and so here I put three copies, page one. I always make sure it's printed in landscape, but it's auto, so you can tell by the way it's turned that it's printed in landscape mode. So if I clicked landscape, it'd be the same. I always also go to custom scale and print at 100%. That ensures that you are getting the correct size. I don't do anything else different. I have like a basic HP desk jet printer from whatever, uh, from Walmart. So that's basically what I do is, and then so... Now that that's there, I'm going to, now that all the settings are where I need it to be, I'm going to just click print. And you'll hear my printer printing in just a sec. There it goes. All right, so as you can see, this is my printer. It's printing. I don't have a duplex printer, so it is printing one-sided. Excuse the mess. I tried to like just keep it all together. Um, so it's printing the three, the three copies, and then I'll show you guys. So one thing that I struggled with, and I'm going to go ahead and let you guys know this. The thing that I struggled with the most when I first started printing my inserts is understanding which way my paper fed through my printer. So what I used to do was I used to take a piece of paper and just draw an arrow. So like, even when I got this one, this one just feeds right through, but I used to have a cannon that it would like slip and do something weird. So I would draw an arrow on, on like a blank piece of paper, just so I would know like which side is printing. Okay. So I've got my inserts here. Okay. Excuse the mess. <laughs> um, and so what I do next is I know because my printer just feeds in like straight through, that I just, all I have to do is flip it over and make sure that that side is facing that way. Because if I turned it this way and the top of the insert was on this side, then it would print upside down. So 
that's what I do. So I'll just take it. This is not easy to do one handed. I'm literally just holding my phone, you guys. Um, and I just feed it back through. Double check to make sure all of my pages are facing the direction I need it to. And then I'm going to go back to here to my MacBook and I'll walk you through step two, I guess, or three. <laughs> back to this screen again. And so the next thing I'll do, it's, it's pretty much the same thing. I'll go up to file. I'll hit print. I'm going to print page two this time. Make my three copies. Ooh, I'm a little happy. Make sure that it's landscape mode. Custom size is 100% right here. Um, you guys don't know how many times, like, because not all inserts, when you download them, will be at 100%. I don't like the actual size either. Um, at 100%, you are guaranteed to get the correct cut lines. Um, and so that's what I do. And then once I have all the settings that I like, I hit print again, and then it'll start printing. Okay, so it's printing the other side. Here. And if you flip it over, you can see that it printed correctly. And I will advise again <laughs> that it's so important that you understand which way your printer feeds in. If you don't know which way your printer feeds, feeds the paper through the printer, it's easy to mess it up. So I would do like a test insert. A lot of um, like Peanuts Planner Co. has like test inserts or you can utilize like freebies and use um and use those to ensure like you understand which way your printer flips the paper now I, again i'm talking about this from the perspective of a printer where you manually have to flip your pages because i've never owned a duplex printer um i know that a lot of people use them but i, I just yeah i have like the hundred dollar or whatever the cheap printer I think I bought this from Walmart. I think it's linked in my Amazon storefront if you prefer things to be shipped to you. I feel like if this was maybe 70, 75 bucks when I bought it a few months or several months ago. Um, so anyway, very simple. And then again, I'm printing on the 32 pound paper. I don't always print on this paper, but because it's my check register, I print it on thicker paper because it stays in my planner longer and I slit them, I slit the inserts. So next, so those are like the tech supplies you need is like some type of computer and then some type of printer and then paper, whatever paper preference that you have. And then next I will go in and show you guys how I actually cut and punch them. Okay, so now I'm at the part where we're gonna cut some inserts. And I also brought in a different type of inserts because we're gonna talk about some cr different crop marks. Um, that could, it depends on, honestly, the insert shop that you purchase from. Simple and Trendy Co. and Peanuts Planner Co. have, to, in my opinion, the best, um, the, the best cutting lines. And I'll show you guys those in, in a minute. But most shops do not use this style of cutting line, which can make inserts very difficult to cut. Um, so this is what I use to cut inserts is I have a Fiskars paper cutter. Bought this on Amazon. Um, there's different ones of different sizes. The one, this the exact one that I use is on, it's linked in my Amazon storefront if you're interested. Um, but there's also like a smaller one that is a little bit less expensive. They also sell these at Michael's, Target, Hobby Lobby, things of that nature. They also have other brands from Walmart. I just prefer the Fiskars just because for me, I've tried the cheaper ones. The Westcott, I think was the brand at Walmart and I didn't like it and I kept messing stuff up. So I, you know, I don't plan on leaving planning for a very long time. So I thought it was worth the 30 something dollar investment to have this paper cutter. And it also has this arm that folds out if you're cutting something with a little bit more length and it goes up to 15 inches across and approximately, if I can close it, <laughs> um, approximately 12 inches down. Now, I guess I should, I, I need to say too, that um, this is specific to personal size. And I think you can pretty much follow 
this exact way of printing like for pocket A6, B6 and whatnot. The only um, size that I've ever had trouble with in all honesty has been A5 size um, cause, because of the punch I have. So I use this Repesco punch. I've had it for two years. It's still fine. Um, I will say like if you're punching like laminated sheets or acetate, sometimes it does get stuck and you just kind of have to wiggle it. It has like this paper catcher down here, like that catches your confetti. So I just empty this like once a week. Um, but if I'm punching anything like that's plastic type material, then I try to empty it as soon as I use it, just because it can make your holes kind of like stop up or anything like super thick. Um, and so on the back, I don't, I'm trying to show this to you guys, my, my dress and bellies on the shot. You have these different like settings um, to where it winds up, you know, depending on your size. So this is like the setting for personal, but then you have a six in pocket and it's on both sides. So I have mine set to personal because right now that's the only size I'm punching inserts in. And then it has this little arm here with these little notches that you just line up like so and that's where the bottom of your page is going to hit so that you're getting like your punch is like all of your punches are going to be lined up i told you guys i'm going super basic um <clears throat> i feel like this kind of would have helped me a lot more when i was new to ring planning because i was just wasting paper and trying to figure stuff out okay so now let's talk about cut marks and then I'll actually show you guys how I punch and or how I cut and punch these. So Simple and Trendy Co has it has these cut marks where it doesn't matter where on the paper like you cut, you can cut the whole thing and no matter what, you can you have a cut line so it's not confusing. Whereas most insert shops use cut lines like these. So if I was to go all the way across here, I would lose my top cut line. I hope that makes sense. Whereas for Simple and Trendy Co, if I was to go all the way across here, I would not lose my cut line for, for the vertical cutting, if that makes sense. And these are much easier to cut, but I will show you guys, that's why I pulled this paper test insert out. I'll show you guys the way that I have learned to cut these um to help me without having to like draw pencil lines because there's a lot of people that will like go in and draw their pencil lines and then cut I, that that's just um too much work for me <laughs> so i've come up i've i've learned i've watched people cut their inserts and i've come up with an easier way so um i'm trying to think now excuse my my mess okay so on your fiskars cutter and I'm going to try to zoom you guys in. I, yeah, this is interesting. Okay. So, I'm zooming you guys in just real quick. So, on your Fiskars cutter, you have this. I don't know if you guys can see it. It's this wire. And that's what you're going to line your cut lines with. You see? And I've learned once it, like, kind of disappears, like, right there. See? Your cut line is there. But then, once it goes to that line, it kind of lines up good okay so i'm zooming you guys back out so that's how i do this so what i do is i i push the paper up to the top of the page and then with these inserts from simple and trendy co i can cut all the way across and it's not a problem i'm trying to get you guys to where it's a little bit more visible this is not as easy as it looks <laughs> okay can you guys see all right, so I've got that wire that sits in the middle of where the paper cutter is, and I've got it lined up. So I can actually cut all the way across this insert and not lose my cut line. So I just take my paper, my blade, and I just run it up, and it's split, okay? And then I flip it, and I still have the cut line lined up perfectly. This is so hard. It's hard to, it's not really capturing well on camera. See, do you guys see like right there, there's like the cut line, but as I move it, it kind of goes and disappears with, with the wire that helps you line it up. And then I just cut 
And then I just repeat, um, I remove my paper. I just repeat and because all the cut lines are there, I can just slide it through and no matter what, I have a cut line. And, and voila, I have a personal size insert that's cut. Um, I cut one insert at a time. I know it's crazy, but I do. I just, I don't like, because I always feel like I don't keep them together well if I try to do more than one. So I just cut one insert at a time. So that's how you do it with cut marks like that. Now let's talk about, like, these are what most shops do. And this is where it can get a little bit tricky. And this is where, like, people will, like, draw a line in just to kind of make it easier for them. But it gets boring to me to do that. So what I this is how I do it. I'm going to try not to, I'm trying, I'm like, how, how do I need to do this? Let me bring you guys down just a little bit. Okay. That might be a little bit better. All right. So for, for this type of insert, here's what I do. I line it up. I kind of do the exact same thing. I line it up. I keep my blade lifted until I get to about right here. I don't cut through the whole piece of paper. Okay, and there's a reason. So I just kind of go and then I stop before I hit the end of the paper. Okay, so I got like this middle cut, but the paper is not split. And then I flip the paper this way. I line up my cut lines again. I don't go all the way in. I still leave it attached to the paper. So I just kind of lift it. I didn't even show it. I just lift it and place it to where it's not at the edge of the paper. So it's not gonna cut the whole paper. And then I just go until I pass that cut line. And then you can see, which I already ripped that one, but you can see that it's still all attached together. And then I carefully, <laughs> carefully um, do the same with this side. So I keep my paper or I keep my cutter lifted until I am not going to cut the whole paper. And then I do the same thing. Okay, and then I flip it again, and it's already starting to come apart, and that's fine. It's not that serious. Um, and then I line it up again, because the paper will lay flat. I line up the cut line again, like so, and I follow the same premise, where I don't let the paper, or I don't let the cutter touch the end of the paper. I pull it. Don't let it end. So that way it's all, it's all, well, that one came. It's okay. Sorry. That one came off, but it's still attached here. So I was like, ooh. So then I turn it again. This is the easiest way for me. I can usually do this really fast. It's just hard when I'm like explaining stuff. Excuse my bad words. Okay. So then I'm just going to pull it across. Make sure that the bottom page is lined up. And then I can go all the way across here. The reason I can is because I'm done cutting. So I just go all the way across and boom, I've just cut two inserts and they're fairly even. That's, I mean, that's pretty much it. It's pretty simple. Um, so I'll show you guys the other method that a lot of people do is they will take, um, like pretend this is the paper test. They'll take a pencil and a ruler and they'll just use the ruler and draw their lines in. I've also seen people use rulers and a box cutter to cut it, but this is, I just prefer this way. It's just easier. And then the last thing I do is I punch my insert. So you can, in this Repesco punch, I think you can do about four inserts a piece. Um, so basically all I do is I just shove it in there Make sure the bottom is in a lot or the bottom of the page touches this little thing here. Press it down and voila, you have inserts. So I'll show you. Here's my ring planner. I'm just gonna, messy planning was happening earlier today. So I'm just gonna go to the middle, pop it open. And voila, it fits perfectly. So that's how I, you know, it's pretty simple, but that's how I print and cut inserts. I hope that made sense to you guys. Um, and I hope that I explained that well, but um, for sure, if you guys have any questions, comment those down below. I tried to be as detailed as possible. 
um because like I said like I was reflecting back like when I first started ring planning like how in the heck do you print and cut these inserts um and there was a lot of paper wasted and I think you just had to kind of play with it and develop your own way but that's the way that works best for me and that's the way that I prefer to cut my inserts so anyway if you enjoyed today's video don't forget to give it a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already I'll see you guys in my next video and I hope you have a fabulous day